What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. I finally saw Spider-Man. No way. Someone's calling me right now. Hello? <laughs> Can Spider-Man come out to play? Absolutely. Boy, are you ugly. Okay, never fear, everyone. I know you didn't want to be stuck with that guy. It is I, the better. Okay, here we go. All right. The better, Spider-Man. Just... It's not Peter Parker. Do you think you're the better looking Spider-Man? You haven't met me. Darn, he's right. But there's one thing you didn't see coming, 3C Films. Not dig on this. Have mercy, please. I'm from another universe. Everyone looked like this. What is up, Spider-Man fans? Welcome back to my channel. I'm ready to travel through the multiverse and talk to you guys about Spider-Man No Way Home without spoiling anything. So don't worry, it may be the most vague review in the history of vague reviews, but we're going to try our best to get through it, give you guys my first thoughts. We'll have spoilers and all those things later on this week, but right now, I just I want to talk about it. I just experienced something epic. With Spider-Man's identity now revealed, Peter asks Doctor Strange for help. When a spell goes wrong, dangerous foes from other worlds start to appear, forcing Peter to discover what it truly means to be Spider-Man. If you guys are here and you want to support this channel, the best way to do that would be drop a thumbs up or leave your comment down below. What is your hype level for this film? We may be doing a little pop figure giveaway later on in the video, but I want to start with kind of the transition from Far From Home into No Way Home and talk about where we meet Peter Parker at the beginning of this movie. And it seems to be the most substantial crisis he's ever had to go through, maybe even greater than fighting Thanos on his home planet of Titan because this time he's not as much worried about fighting an alien in space. Now, the whole snapping the population out of existence, that was a big deal. But now, the whole world knows that Spider-Man is Peter Parker and he is having to escape from this madness. But it's not only him. It's not only Peter. And that's kind of the theme all throughout this movie. With the fact that he is Spider-Man comes baggage. And that baggage carries over into those that he loves because, uh, yes, he feels like he's putting them in danger, but now everyone else knows that they're associated with Peter. So these are the decisions that he's having to make all throughout this movie. It's like, how am I going to protect this person that I love? What do I tell these people that are trying to get this information out of me? And a big question being asked by our main three characters, our trio of sorts, is how the heck are we going to get into college? Because <laughs> this is kind of crazy what's happening outside of the fact that we are supposed to be getting an education right now. So still, even after the first movie and the second movie, it's Peter Parker having to deal with high school, real life things on top of being Spider-Man, but of course the circumstance is much more drastic in this film. Now, that's about as far as I want to go with that portion of the movie. The other portion that we have to talk about is the inclusion of Doctor Strange and those that we have seen in the trailer talking Doc Ock, Green Goblin, and ye plethora of villains here who come over via the multiverse to battle Peter Parker. And Peter, he's struggling with some decisions having to be made and there's some disagreement, some tension between he and Doctor Strange that I, for one, you know, obviously we saw it coming because of the trailers, but prior to any marketing for this film, I didn't know that would be the case. I thought it would be, oh, Peter and Doctor Strange, they're fellow Avengers, they're going to get along. No, there's some tension there because there's some disagreement. And within that disagreement comes a lot of emotions that have to be put in check for both Peter and really for Doctor Strange. But you also have Spider-Man's greatest foes his greatest villains that are on the other side of this and talking about those actors returning to their roles, feeling every ounce of that nostalgia. Now, you know, we'll get into criticisms with the movie. Nostalgia trumps all if it's executed correctly. And I think this movie is so well done from a story standpoint. And a lot of that has to do with bringing back things that we know and grew up with. And let me tell you guys, I grew up with that trilogy and Alfred Molina, Willem Dafoe, seeing them come to life one more time. Now, it's a bit different because, you know, transferring into different universes, there's a bit of a jarring element there and the mentalities. 
I was worried that they would shift to a point that wasn't believable when I first saw the trailer. I said, they're going to have some splaining to do because I want to know why this person feels this way now when they didn't feel that way in the other movies. Can they explain that? Are you going to be able to do it? And I think they do. I think they do a nice job of keeping everyone that's aware of what the multiverse is happy. And even to them, they may be over explaining it. But to those that are very confused by all of this going on, wait, wait, aren't those the, the same actors that were in the other movie? What's, what's happening? The film does such a good job of explaining how they're there, why they're there, why their mentality is the way that it is. And a lot of these massive questions that I had after seeing the first trailer and knowing what we knew at that point, I was saying, all right, are they going to be able to do this and make sense of it all? Because that's the biggest thing here. If they can't bring it all together because we've seen the overabundance of villain problem before except in those movies it was like two to three villains talking maybe your spider-man 3 your amazing spider-man 2 but in this movie you don't just have one or two well all the ones we've seen in the trailers and that's a lot of villains to handle but thankfully none of the issues I have with this movie come from an overwhelming amount of villains. It really comes down to other things because the presence of the villains and their stories and even some of the comedy and humor, a little bit of it misplaced, right? But for the most part, everything that comes out of that was entertaining, super cool to see. You get some great dialogue, some great banter, a lot of references, a lot of things that fans are going to love. And I thought their inclusion was warranted, justified, and freaking entertaining because that's why we go to the movies right but again it comes back to the fact that this is peter's journey you have all this madness all of these crazy and interesting storylines happening but when we get peter on screen dealing with what he has to deal with feeling what he has to feel and peeling what he has to peel i was trying to find another rhyme that didn't work wait healing because he has to heal. Nailed it. But being with Peter through all of this is MJ and Ned, Aunt May, and Happy. Like, he has a group around him that is going to help propel him forward and try their best to push him to make the best decision. Now, some of the decision-making in this film that maybe someone believes is right, they will make that decision and regret it heavily about five to ten minutes later and from that from those decisions we get some phenomenal emotion dare i say tom holland's best outing as spider-man yet yes i dare to say it because it's true it is by far his best and most mature performance as the character but that maturity comes from character growth and it's so impressive that this movie on this huge scale with a lot of cgi a lot of green screen we'll talk about it that is still delivering a character that is so well fleshed out, and I'm just like, I'm overwhelmingly happy with the fact that they managed to nail that aspect of the movie. And then we come to the CGI, the visual effects, and really all of the crazy action scenes that we get in this film. You know, a complaint that we got in Far From Home and Homecoming was a lack of action, a lack of hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes, and those are things that we get big time in this movie. And unexpectedly so like I didn't know how much fighting we would get with Tom and some of these villains but we absolutely get it and it delivers in spades and uh, Defoe specifically will give comic book fans one of the cooler villainous performances we have seen and I know Doc Ock was the one heavily marketed in the trailers but this is Defoe's villainous role uh, my god my god he's so good in this film <laughs> Here are my nitpicks. You ready? And this is the part of the view that nobody wants to hear, but I got to talk about the overabundance of CGI and green screening. Yes, it's a Spider-Man movie. Clearly, we're going to get a lot of that, right? But in this film specifically, it feels like even in the moments where we didn't need to do it, whether it be stand in front of a green screen or, you know, do some things that could have used practical over CGI, they opted to go that route, and that makes the majority of the film kind of have that feel to it. Now, it's not a bad feel, but I can't sit back and say, well, it's the prettiest Spider-Man movie I've ever seen because it's not the case. And while I love the way that John Watts brings in comedy and everything that he has to balance in this film, and really the script is an impressive feat in this movie. And we'll get more into it when we can talk spoilers, but on a visual scale, 
Really great action scenes, super fun battles, uh, but I could have done with a bit more there. And then you have the common critique that I'm seeing where the first half of the movie, it's trying its best to find its footing, but I don't want to fault that as much because once it found its footing and it planted all of those seeds, the movie took off, it never looks back, and I believe a lot of that stuff was necessary or warranted for the second half to be as good as it was. But I will say the second half of the film is much better than the first. Both halves are necessary to make a whole. Before I give you guys my score for this brand new MCU film, be sure to drop your thumbs up down below if you do that. And go follow me on TikTok. That's the giveaway. You gotta like this video. You gotta follow me on TikTok. I will be giving away one of these awesome Spider-Man pop figures just to say thank you for all of your support. Uh, but as for this film, Spider-Man No Way Home is the biggest Spider-Man movie yet, but the focus always remains on Peter. He shows great maturity and growth as this character. The second half of the film is as emotionally impactful as any other in the MCU. I had an absolute blast. Look, this is a film built specifically for the fans to get them excited, to get them to jump out of their seats. It accomplishes all of those goals with a story that comes together. Yes, you can nitpick certain things about the filmmaking, but its goal was very clear, and I believe it accomplished that. And because of that, my score is an 88% for Spider-Man No Way Home. It is... Um, one of those movies that I'm just, I'm never going to forget seeing all of this happen for the first time. I hope you guys feel the same way. I want to know if you feel the same way. Look, fan service, it has been presented to us in many different ways in many different films. Most of the time, well, I'd say half the time, it's poorly, poorly executed. But in this case, I believe uh, it's executed very, very well. And I'm interested to see what you guys think about this movie. So appreciate you big time for watching. Come back. We're going to have all kinds of reviews and MCU tier lists and Spider-Man rankings later on this week. And a spoiler review where I might put the suit back on. I'll see you soon. I gotta take this suit off. My wife's asleep. And I can't reach the zipper. This is, this is so complicated. I don't even know how I'm going to do this. He Hello? Can't reach it. Hold on. Hold on. Do I have it? No! Dang it! That's it. That's it. Oh, this sounds wrong. But it feels so right.